Alrighty, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can add feature management to your .NET Core application. My name is Vasily Olenik, I'm a senior developer and you're watching the .NET architecture and detailed design series, where we are building a modular monolith notification system from scratch using industry's best practices. So what's a feature flag? It's essentially just a toggle where you turn on or turn off specific functionality based on some criteria. It might be, for example, a time window when you want a specific functionality available inside your system like Black Fridays, which are essentially once a year or a week during a year. You might want to release a specific functionality to all users of your platform on a specific date, let's say 24th of November. However, you might want to enable that feature and enable that functionality for other internal users like your testers a week prior and let them test throughout if everything is working correctly. An old school approach would be to release a version of your code base on one date and then release another version of the same approach with the turned off everything on the release date. But that's error prone and not really pragmatic since you'll have to go through the release phases. An easier approach is to add feature flags where you turn off or turn on specific features. Without further ado, let's take a look at how .NET Core does that. And fortunately, we have built in support for that. All we need to do is first of all, add a specific NuGet package, which we have over here. And it's Microsoft Feature Management Core. This package contains everything we need for adding feature management pragmatically to our .NET Core application. So we're going to take a look at first how you can add API or feature flags to your API endpoints. So you can enable or disable specific endpoints based on some requirements. Then we're going to take a look at how you can do the same thing inside your ASP.NET Core services with basic true or false, uh, time window, percentage and custom feature flags. So we have our NuGet package over here. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is go to utilities and over here I created a features folder where I have two things. First of all, it's a feature flag endpoint filter and it's basically a class that implements the I endpoint filter like usual. Then we're gonna receive the endpoint name that we want to work with. And then inside the invoke next, we're going to have our logic. First of all, we're going to take and retrieve our feature management from the HTTP context. Then we're going to check that if a feature with a specific prefix, in our case, it will be API underscore endpoint name. This is pretty easy. And the feature manager that we have over here is coming from the NuGet library that we have installed. In a bit, we're going to see how you can wire it all up in the DI container. Essentially, it's basic things like you have a couple of methods where you just pass in a feature flag name and you double check if it's enabled or disabled. In our case, if the feature flag is disabled, we're just going to return the not found. If it's enabled, we're going to proceed to the next filter. Besides this small endpoint filter class, we have a small extension method that will allow us to specify the feature flag. And as you can see, I already applied it to one endpoint in our system since that's more than enough for a POC demonstration. So if we go to this push API endpoint and basically we can also go through our services and then go to routing, push service endpoint routing. This is our minimal API. And as you can see, I've added with feature flag and added the events underscore push name for this specific endpoint. And the name differs a little bit since I want to be able to add this feature flag to all of the endpoints if I need. So if we're going to have V2, I'm going to use the same feature flag for V2 also. That's the setup that you need to add feature flags. Now, where do we configure that we want a specific feature turned on or turned off? To do that, we're going to have to go to our web host inside our program.cs we will need to add this one specific line of code, which is add feature management. Now, once we have this, we're going to go to our app settings.json and add this configuration. And the naming is required to be a feature management. And then we can see our features with their names defined underneath. So we have the first feature, which is API underscore events push. And it matches exactly the push endpoint events underscore push and the feature 
flag endpoint, which is API underscore. So it's a API underscore, the name of the feature flag. And over here, we have set it to be enabled. So if I debug the solution right now, so I'll just drag my browser over here and try to execute the request over here. As you can see, we basically hit our endpoint over here and we've passed successfully the API feature flag check. Now, if I'll just continue and return back to the browser, it will obviously fail to process the request itself. But what's interesting is that I can go to the app settings right now and just mark this as false, save the changes and it will automatically apply the changes to the feature flag. So if I will send the same request once again and execute it, I should get a 404 not found, which is obviously the result that we want from inside our feature flag endpoint filter. So over here we have a not found. So we have the ability to programmatically turn on or turn off specific features, specific endpoints of our system. I'll turn this back on and save and for now stop debugging. What else can we do inside here? Basically, we can also add a more complex check and I've mentioned the Black Friday thingy where you have a time window when you want, for example, your products to have a specific discount applied. For that, we're gonna need to use the time window feature flag, which is really easy to configure. So if we take a look at it, here we have a time window feature flag and we have over here the enabled for. This setting basically allows us to specify specific filters for our feature flag. In our case, our filter is Microsoft time window and we pass in two different parameters, the start and the end date of a specific feature. In our case, it's Saturday 24th of November and apparently my calendar is broken, so Saturday should be 25th. And we want this feature to be enabled from 25th of November 2023 to the 1st of December 2023. I have added this time window check to the push service endpoint for the sake of example. So I'm gonna take this part over here and just put it up on top, put a couple of breakpoints and restart my application. Now, once started, I can go back to the browser, execute. Basically, we have hit the endpoint and since the endpoint API is enabled. And if I debug, this time window should be false. As you can see, it's false because the time window is not met. I'm right now on 24th of November. Continue with this and go to my app settings.json. And basically over here say that I want it to be Friday 24th of November, save the changes, go back to the browser and re-execute once again. It should apply the changes pretty fast. So time window filter right now is set to true. This is the most simple example of a feature filter based on some time window that you might have or that you might require in your application. So for example, you might want to have a release on a specific date. So you kind of can specify the start date and then the end date set it one year from now. And basically whenever, when you release the feature, you in the next release, you'll basically just take off the feature flag itself. So that's how we've done it in the past for a couple of projects. And that's pretty fine since you don't want to keep a lot of feature flags inside your code because it might become a mess at some point. So if you're using feature flags for releases, you would usually want to remove the feature flags once the releases go live. So I'm gonna stop this for a second and go into the next example that I want to cover. And this one is the more interesting one since it's not the basic 50-50 uh, like the percentage. So this one is also a basic example where we want 50% of our requests or 50% of the checks to pass as true and 50 to pass as false. This is basic. What we want to do is create a custom feature flag where we can inject something like a service and then double check on that since that might be a really good use case. For example, you want to check and to enable specific features for users that have some specific subscription over there. So I've added that over here. It's a subscription credits filter where we basically have a specific filter that 
is applied to clients based on some API key. So I'm gonna collapse the shared part over here and go to the push service. And we have a subscription filter here. I have a simple iSubscription service, which double checks um, if the user has enough credits or for example, based on some API key. So you pass an API key for a specific client or for a specific application, double check if that application has enough credits to use your API for data retrieval, storage, or something like that. That's a basic example over here. We're gonna pass in some settings. So we might want to ignore the check for specific clients that, I don't know, you have a sandbox environment over there, or you have some clients that have some specific agreement with you to not have this credit based approach or have some other kind of subscription over there. So this is for POC. We want to specify to ignore some clients. So if we go back to our app settings, we can see that we can pass in these parameters inside the parameters object here. So we have ignore for clients and we have a list of keys. In our case, it's development keys that we want to ignore. And then we finally get to the subscriptions credits filter, which is a basic class that inherits from the I feature filter. We're gonna have a filter LS, which is basically the name of the feature flag that we have over here. So if I go back to the filter itself, this is the name of the feature. Now for the rest is pretty, pretty straightforward. We can inject different things inside the feature filter in our case, I'm injecting the iSubscription service and the iHTTP contact successor to get the API key from the HTTP context. Then I'm just basically evaluating, well, first retrieving the API key from the HTTP context. I'm retrieving the keys from the parameters like this. So it's pretty easy. It's context that parameters get and then you specify a specific, well, the specific configuration object that you have and I'm just ignoring some keys. So for example, for some except keys, I'm just returning true. And finally, I call the subscription service that has credits async method with passing in the API key as a string over there. The exact implementation of subscription service is of no interest to us since it might vary on your end. We're basically here for the functionality and for the enabler, the technical enabler. Now I've set a couple of breakpoints over here. I'm going to go to push service endpoint and remove this time window thingy over here. So we don't need it. And to double check the functionality itself, we have the feature manager is enabled async and we pass in the subscription credits filter. I'm going to start the solution right away. And for us to pass headers, I'll need to open the postman, not the local browser, take it over here. So we have the headers. We have a dev key that we want to allow, which is basically stored in the app settings as an always true value over there. And if I run this request right now, we can see that I've hit the endpoint itself. I'm gonna proceed with the debug and we can see that it enters the subscription credits filter. I'm gonna retrieve the API key from the request header, which is in our case dev key. I'm gonna proceed accept keys, which is an array right now with ignore for clients and we have the dev key over there, F10 and I'm basically returning through, press continue and it skipped the next breakpoint since I didn't add it over here. So I should have added it here. But if we return back, we can see that it's at 200 okay. So if I send it once again, just remove this breakpoint. We can see that the feature flag is enabled. So everything is okay. Now, if I go back to Postman and switch the API key, if I just send the request, we can see that we're no longer passing since the API key is not valid. It's a test, which we didn't mark as allowed to pass the feature filter. Essentially, that's it for feature flags and this is basically the most popular approaches that I and my team are using. Since they cover most of the functionality that we require, which is turning on or turning off functionality for specific users, turning on a specific feature on a specific date and so on. One other thing that you might add over here is centralized configuration for your feature flags that the cherry on top, if you want to take it like that. 
In case of Azure, you have the Azure App Settings service, I believe it was called, where you can centralize your application's configuration and feature management. So in that case, you will have the turn on or turn off toggles from within that service. Alternatives to that are basically from the open source Unleash. I've used it in the past with one specific project for a specific client who wanted this kind of functionality. I'm not really opinionated on any specific implementation since I myself am using a configuration or just basically pushing configurations into the app settings themselves. With that said, thank you for watching. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss any new updates from me. And see you next time.